morning everybody and welcome to Thought for the Day for this Thursday morning, the final one for this week actually, um, because we are in Holy Week as you know, and we're looking at Jesus, some of the events of Holy Week and of course on Friday, it's Good Friday morning and we will be holding a, a communion service uh, of remembrance and, uh, and uh, reflection in our church tomorrow. So that will be streamed live on our Facebook page, if you want to join us there you're more than welcome to do that or come and join us in church if you can, that would be brilliant. Um, and uh, it'll be up later up on, on YouTube as well. So uh, that's happening tomorrow. So this is the last one today. We're going to walk with Jesus from the Last Supper into the Garden of Gethsemane and spend some time there with him this morning in that poignant moment as he prays to his Father. But uh, before we do that, let's pray ourselves, shall we? Heavenly Father, we pray that you'd help us this morning. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you'd open our hearts to feel something of your heart and to learn something of you through your Holy Spirit as we uh, encounter you this morning through your word. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. So, Jesus has uh, eaten the last supper with his disciples. We've seen a number of things this week, haven't we? Yesterday, Jesus and Peter and um, that, 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 uh, and Judas and all of that happened there. The drama of the moment is huge, isn't it? The, uh, the culmination of everything now is, is with only hours away, isn't it? This cosmic battle that Jesus referred to between himself and the power of darkness, which he is to win, but only to win by going through this awful crucifixion process and uh, the humiliation of that and taking upon himself the sin of mankind as we know. And so the air is thick with drama. The whole thing is, isn't it really, as we go through these events. Jesus has taught the disciples, he's prepared them as best as he can uh, for the trouble that is ahead to, 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 to walk with humility and not seek a throne here on this earth. Talked about all this being a fulfilment of scripture and that he's in control, that God is with him in the midst of all of this and they don't need to be troubled. Uh, the Holy Spirit is coming to equip them and help them uh, and, and he said lots and lots about these things hasn't he? And, um, uh, and then he says in Luke's count, this is enough, let's go. And he get up and leaves the room. And in Luke 22 and verse 39 onwards, we read this. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. And he withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. And an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And, he, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. What a very poignant moment, very dark moment in many ways, wasn't it really? And it feels like when we talk about this, whenever we talk about this moment, we're on pretty holy ground, aren't we really here? Jesus in agony. Um, Jesus has already been betrayed by the kiss or will by the kiss or will be betrayed by the kiss of a friend in a moment or two. One of the few moments in scripture where we actually see a communion between the father and the son as they as they talk together where the veil of heaven has been drawn apart and we see this holy moment that one of the holiest moments of holy week if you like and uh, it feels like we're looking into really the very heart of God himself doesn't it. So there's we see Jesus in agony this dark scene here. No more words, really. Lots of teaching has happened. Lots of words have been spoken. They've eaten the meal. Jesus demonstrated his servant heart and he's under incredible stress now. He's, he's, he's showing his humanity. We never see Jesus' humanity more than probably in this moment um, as he represents mankind and goes into this most difficult of tasks that God has called him to do, um, that he knew he was going to be doing. It was always there waiting for him. This The agony of uh, fallen life that's been caused by sin and all of our sin and what have you is beginning to fall on him now I think in these moments isn't it really he, the enormity of the situation and so I don't think when Jesus is praying to God and he's in these moments and he's in agony he's not thinking about necessarily the physical pain although that's tremendous and it's going to be awful but he's thinking more about the pain of being separated from his father and the, the, if we ever wanted to see what the awful effects of sin are, uh, that are willful sinning and the things that we think are just nothing, we see it here in the heart of Jesus, don't we? His darkest moments. We've all been there, haven't we, in some dark moments. I'm sure you've all had dark moments in your life, just as, as I have. What do we do? Well, Jesus, 
leads by example in everything that he does. It's, it's everything he says, everything he does, are all examples for us, aren't they? And Jesus turns his heart to his father in prayer. He gets alone with his father and he's honest with his father in this prayer. If it's, if it, Lord, if it's possible to take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. And it, it's communication, isn't it? This, this, this heart of communication, the honesty and the openness there. Are you honest with God when you pray in this sense? And, and the father and the son here are discussing the need for all of this. And the agony, in a sense, is felt on both sides. You sense that as Jesus talks to his father. We, we don't hear the father's voice, but it's almost like, I would love to take this from you. I would love that you didn't have to go through this because this is what, but it's the whole of history, the whole of time has come to this moment. It has to happen. So the father and uh, son almost discussing an eternal plan here as the, uh, Jesus is in prayer. Neither of them wants this, but it must happen. So it's important to understand this is not what some people say, an angry God emptying his wrath on his son, as some have said, and almost like a, a form of child abuse. It's not. This is a God who knows this has to be done. It's, a, it's, it's something that has to be crossed. It's a price that has to be paid. It's a deal that has to be done, if you like. And it's hard and it's going to be difficult. And God sometimes leads us through those things as well, doesn't he? But he's not angry. His heart bleeds for him, literally. And we see Jesus sweating, as it were, Great, great big drops of blood. It's an intimate, painful conversation. Jesus is in deep agony. If we ever wondered how Jesus feels about our sin, if we ever wondered about how Jesus feels about anything that goes, illness and sickness and problems and pain that we have in our life, we see it in this moment. This is brutal. It's real. It's not religion now. This is a real relationship with real God. And uh, we can easily say, can't we, and, and when things are going wrong in our life and things aren't right and we say, oh, well, we know the Bible tells all things work together for good. And they do. And this was one of those moments. This was going to be working together for good, but it was still brutal. And here we see it's OK to be grieving over sadnesses and sorrows and suffering in our life. Jesus gives us permission to do that here in the Garden of Gethsemane. And yet, you see, here's the prayer that we all pray in these situations. Lord. In our humanity, we'd rather have this taken away from us. We don't want to suffer in this way, just like Jesus did. Are you glad that Jesus prayed this way? But ultimately, he shows the way we should always pray. Yet not my will, but yours be done. It's, not, it's a model prayer, isn't it? Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Jesus says it in this most difficult of moments. He knows that's what has to happen. It's the only way submission, not simply agreement, not just, OK, get on with it then. Submission to his father's will. And that's how we pray, isn't it? Or should be. Are we uh, really um, a huge thing? We can say a lot more, but a huge moment, this, isn't it? And Jesus talks about a cup here, doesn't he? Take this cup from me. But what is this cup that he's talking about? Father, if it's your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And what it is really, and this is the moment, and this is what Jesus is describing, what's going to happen. This cup is what he has to carry and Jeremiah 25 it refers to the cup of full of wine of God's wrath that, that uh, and it's it, it's God's hatred for our sin and hatred for everything that wields against him this cosmic battle in this moment the cup that Jesus is going to have to drink the crucifixion and all the penalty of death and the separation from his father and the darkness of sin he's going to have to take all that so that we don't he drinks the cup so that we don't it's the cup of God's wrath filled with God's hatred for our sin and the cup wasn't the physical pain as we've already said it's the wrath of God and 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 the separation from him which the only time in all eternity that Jesus is separated the thought of experiencing hell itself was almost too much for Jesus to bear but he knew he had a battle to win not just for that moment for him personally but for the whole of mankind the whole of history is in this moment here and he was preparing to do that and he's preparing to do that for you and for me so this is what i've often called a gethsemane moment we all reach them in our lives where we have to decide are we following jesus or not and sometimes following jesus is painful and it's difficult and it brings suffering and sometimes in the midst of suffering we can't see or hear god and we wonder what's going on but god we can rest assured has a purpose just as he does with his son here. And so God leads him and helps him through that time. And so he, and the way he gets through that is by praying. And ultimately, 
yielding in submission to his father's will. That Gethsemane moment. Lord, I'd much rather you didn't take me through this, whatever it is in your life at the moment, but yet not my will, but yours be done. And just like with Jesus, God isn't sitting there indifferent to your suffering and indifferent to the problems and indifferent to what you're praying about and your situation. He's in there with you and he's comforting you as the angel came and comforted Jesus and strengthened him. We might not have an, a physical angel sitting there, but God will strengthen us for the task. That's God doesn't leave us on our own to deal with it, but he gives us more strength. My grace is sufficient for you, as God said to Paul, and it's the same for us here. What a moment this is as we come to Good Friday tomorrow, as we prepare our hearts, maybe spend some time dwelling on this moment again today and see what God speaks to you about in this moment. Uh, let's pray together now as we, as we close this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this Gethsemane moment that we see here with Jesus. And we thank you for what it teaches about your heart and about his and about what you, uh, in a sense, our example and what you think about us in our suffering and in our prayers and when we come to you. And we thank you, Lord, that Jesus gives us the example, not my will, but yours be done. Lord, give us the grace and the strength as you did for your son to enable us to say that with all conviction, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.